Hello and welcome to the look ahead for Thursday, the 26th of September with me, Fiona Sincotta, Senior Market Analyst at City Index. So overnight, we'll be watching out for the minutes from the Bank of Japan meeting in the European session. We've got the um, interest rate decision from the SMB. We've also got US durable goods, jobless claims and Q2 GDP in the US session. Uh, followed by uh, plenty of Fed speakers, including Powell, Bowman and Williams. So let's just get started with what we're expecting from US data tomorrow. It's been a very relatively quiet week as far as data is concerned for the US so far. We've obviously had US consumer confidence, which fell sharply, um, just raising concerns once again that the Federal Reserve may need to cut interest rates at a faster pace than initially expected. Tomorrow, we'll be watching out for GDP figures. They are Q2. They're also uh, a revision, so they're not expected to be as market moving unless there's a big difference between the expectation of 3% and what it actually gives us. Durable goods orders are expected to uh, decrease by 2.6% after rising 9.8% previously. And then I think the main focus is going to be on jobless claims. You now, with the market really focusing on whether there is any sense of weakness seeping in to the jobs market. In fact, we know that there is some weakness seeping in, but to what extent that's being shown up in the jobless claims, which are expected to rise just modestly to 225 up from 219,000. So um, with all that in mind, oh, the, and I was going to say, probably also the market moving focus will be on Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, um, particularly after that bumper rate cut that we saw last week. Um, we'll be looking for more comments from other Federal Reserve speakers, sort of you know, giving their views behind the reasons behind that 50 basis point rate cut. Um, so this is the NASDAQ that we're looking at here. Obviously, if we get any um, sense of weaker than expected data and a cautious sounding uh, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, then I think that could impact sentiment um, and be negative for US stocks. This is the NASDAQ that we're looking at. It's just broken out of this triangle. It's rebounded from the 200 SMA, breaking down, broken out of that falling trend line. And it's just hovering around that 20,000 level. Can't really seem to uh, get past it. Does need a fresh catalyst to move past that. Will that be Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell calming sort of concerns over uh, a potential hard landing? That might be enough to get uh, the price over there, particularly if we see the other data come in line with expectations. If we get a more cautious sounding power that could raise concerns of uh, those lingering sort of recession concerns, um, the price may rebound lower um, back towards sort of this level here, which I was going to say, this is the the um, falling trend line support, which is around the 19,300 level. Um, but, you know, as far as in order to make a lower low, that's down at 18,400, the 200 SMA. It's also the low that we saw in September. So, you know, there's quite a distance to go till we get to that. So for the moment, that uptrend is still in track, but we do need to break above that 20,000. So just to also be taking a look at what else is going on in the pairs, um, we've got pound US dollar. So the US dollar actually fell to a fresh low, 14-month low today. Um, but we've actually also seen weakness in sterling US dollar. The dollar did rebound after reaching that 14-month low. Um, and then we've also seen that the pound is under pressure as well after hitting a two-and-a-half-year high. So it's come back down below that 34 level, and it's heading towards the uh, 3250, 3265 level, that was the August high. And what we've got going on here is, yeah, we've seen a rebound in the US dollar, but also I think there are a little bit of concerns now sort of, sort of surrounding the um, UK budget. I mean, it's still a month away, but I think that's just going to be on um, traders' minds, which may prevent the, um, or at least limit the upside in the pound US dollar. We did also have um, Megan Green, Bank of England uh, uh, policymaker, speak today, and she was actually cautious about cutting interest rates 
too quickly in the UK. So, you know, as far as um, the um, Fed BOE divergence is concerned, this pair is supported. You know, it, it, we've got the Bank of England going cautiously. We've got the uh, Federal Reserve, who uh, the market believes will cut rates by a further 20 base, uh, sorry, 50 basis points in November. That's around 58 percent priced in at the moment. So um, but just looking here, we've seen a series of higher highs and higher lows. Um, the so you know we've got a, a an upward trend in place. Do need to get above that one thirty five. Um, so one thirty four above that next um, logical uh, levels we're looking for will be one thirty five round number. Because I mean, as far as actual levels to go, there isn't too much more to be looking at until we get up to this one thirty six fifty level which was around the beginning of 2022 and the highs that we saw around there. So that's the pound US dollar. There's no UK data due tomorrow, so the dollar is going to be the driving force behind this as well as sentiment for the pound. Um, and then we've also got, as I mentioned, um, the uh, SMB interest rate decision. Now, the SMB is expected to cut rates, potentially a third straight cut. Um, taking interest rate to 1% for a 25 basis point cut. Um, that will, but basically because we've seen inflation there crawl, it's been below the 2% target level that the SMB has since uh, June. It's also e fallen, sorry, June 23, so June last year. And it also eased to, inflation eased to 1.1% in, in April. So there is reasons to be cutting that interest rate. Just as far as the um, the actual chart is telling us what's going on here, we've seen um, the US dollar sort of weaken quite significantly against the um, Swiss franc. Uh, up until recently, we're just seeing this now, this sort of, it seems to have steadied out. We seem to have found a bottom um, for the time being. It's trading in a holding pattern. On the bottom, we've got it sort of capped on the bottom by that um, 0 0.80, well, 0 0.84 maybe, just below 83. And on the top side, um, by 0 0.8530. So, you know, I think we're looking for a breakout trade here. If you're looking for a breakout on the upside, um, with uh, a strengthening US dollar after uh, a dovish sounding SMB, then watch out for a rise above the 0 0.85 30 level that could um, push uh, sea gains rise further towards the level up here around 0 0.8740, something like that. But this is, I was going to say, we are still in a pretty bearish picture. We're below the 200 SMA, we're below the 50 SMA. Um, on the downside, but we've got those longer um, wicks on the downside, which suggests to me that there isn't much selling pressure at those lower levels, which is why I think a break to the upside might be more likely. But on the downside, if we get below that 0 0.8370 level, then that can open the door to the 83.30 um, level, which was the December low. So I hope you like what we've seen today. And if you do, then please do give this video a like. And for more videos like it, then please do subscribe.